Next round draft picks were introduced here in San Antonio over the weekend. Number one draft pick ninth overall, Baylor's Jeremy Sohan made the trip along with his family. That includes Anetta, his mom, who played basketball at Oklahoma Panhandle State University before the family moved to England. They got to see Jeremy's new home, the AT&T Center, together. And then there's the 20th overall pick, the so-called steal of the draft, Ohio State's wingman Malachi Branham. Like Jeremy, he got a photo opportunity with his family on court. And the 25th pick, Notre Dame's Blake Wesley, as they were being introduced as a press conference this week, and all three were asked about their first impressions of San Antonio. It's hot. It's <laughs> crazy hot. Um, <laughs> but it's, uh, I feel like it's really cool. Um, I feel like there's a lot of culture, and uh, I feel like we can all, you know, give something to the sea. And I can't wait to, to connect with the sea and the people of San Antonio. You guys, you guys, a couple of Midwest guys, probably. Definitely yeah, I was, yeah, I was about to say it's it's kind of like good just having nice weather, <laughs> especially in Ohio. It's so bipolar, you don't know if it's going to rain, <laughs> snow, you know if it's going to be hot. It's just it's it's nice weather here, so I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> no, for sure it is hot. Uh, I don't really like the heat, but <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is. Uh, yeah, I'm from Midwest, so I like the snow. All right, welcome to town, guys, and congrats. Here's a look at the Spurs. Summer League schedule starts Friday, July 8th at Cleveland. We'll have more over at KSAT.com. Well, it didn't take long for the Colorado Avalanche to damage the Stanley Cup trophy. That's when Nicholas Obey Kubel was skating towards his teammates for a team photo after eliminating the Lightning in Game 6 when he tripped, and it was the Stanley Cup that broke his fall, putting a dent in the cup before they even got it to the locker look at his teammates oh. reaction whoops yeah oh well they'll fix it although you know with that video being shown a lot of people are talking about it uh some people are saying that uh off camera uh -huh. it's been handled much worse as well oh really that's yeah that's what some of the reports were yesterday hmm. off yeah. camera <laughs> and stuff like that so I don't know oh, about oh, that. Oh, oh as far as what's happened to the cup <laughs> yes. in the oh, past yeah yes. okay yeah. we had it in the studio yeah. here years ago I, didn't I we mike a, i have a picture holding it yeah yeah, yeah somewhere so was it dented no no they <laughs> take they, they it's unusually very light the metal is very thin on yeah it, so. yeah okay cool more on the stanley cup coming up right here <laughs> on sa live with uh mike oster later on today <laughs> uh, 443 76 degrees let's look outside with trans guide right now looking at loop 1604 at spurs ranch road things are moving there We're going to try this again out of that train derailment in Missouri. We're learning more about the moments about the, uh, after the crash on the tracks. ABC's Andrew ben Jimbert has a story. This morning, passengers describing the terrifying moment an Amtrak train derailed, killing at least three people. All of a sudden, the car that we were on was over and everyone was flying everywhere. The train, carrying more than 270 passengers from Los Angeles to Chicago, hit a dump truck at a railroad crossing in rural Missouri, derailing eight passenger cars and turning nearly the entire train on its side. There was dust and dirt everywhere. I was on the side of the train that hit the ground first, and so everybody on the other side fell on top of us. Seats were coming apart, bags were going everywhere, um, and then yeah, you know, after it stopped, you could smell the, the the fumes, and so people started panicking, thinking it was going to catch fire. So we tried to get out as quick as possible. Emergency responders racing to the scene as passengers climbed through the windows. You all right? Yes, sir. Sixteen Boy Scouts from Wisconsin traveling on the train also jumped into action, helping administer first aid to victims. We had one young man who. Um, provided aid to the uh, dump truck driver uh, until he expired. Uh, they just were helping immobilize people on backboards and getting them out safely. Anybody who was, uh, you know, complaining of any sort of pain, help it load them to, into ambulances. It was not immediately clear why the dump truck, its wheels seen here after the crash, was on the tracks, but authorities say there are no crossing arms at that location, which is not unusual in rural areas. It's an uncontrolled uh, cross buck intersection on a gravel road, uh, so no lights, no electronic control devices, things such as that. The crash, similar to this one Sunday in Northern California, which also left three people dead after a train collided with a car at this crossing without signals or guardrails. 
Back in Missouri, more than 40 people had to be hospitalized after the derailment. Federal investigators will arrive today to determine what went wrong. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Transguide right now. The only thing of note is some construction on 37 at Houston Street near the downtown area. The Houston exit is closed. You're looking live at 35 and Olympia Hills Parkway out there on the far northeast side. There's 35 at Nogalitos. Good start to the day overall on the roads. And uh, yesterday, I was going to say, it was really nice to get some cloud cover. I didn't get rain, but my husband was working out like around Canyon Lake. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And he's like, there's a lot of rain over here. I was like, I told you. <laughs> there was a ton of rain. And Mike, I thought that front came through. It turned out it was one of those outflow boundaries. Yeah. But it, I mean, just, it kicked up the dust and the dead grass and everything. Yeah, during uh, it, when that big storm hit in uh, Kamal County up around Canyon Lake, and then you could see that ring kind of forming around it on radar. And that, again, was the outflow boundary because you get those very strong winds. They hit the ground and then they spread out and that helped to touch off more showers and thunderstorms actually south of town yesterday. But yeah, that was uh, some pretty good storms up there up around uh, Kamau County yesterday afternoon. That's going to be the exception rather than the rule as far as anything potentially severe. And that would be just because basically of uh, some high winds out there. But the atmosphere is set up for that. Uh, yeah, if you if you got rain, consider yourself lucky. Uh, it was very hit or miss. And basically, you know, this is from well out to the east, but please and thank you. Yes, indeed. And here's what it looks like outside right now. Nothing going on here in town. We do have a couple of showers just sort of uh, scattered about the area. A couple of them in portions of the uh, the hill country as of right now. It's not a lot, just uh, you know, a few little light ones. They appear to be sort of uh, dying down as well. And then if you sort of look at the big picture, there's almost a bit of a, a low right up here to the north, and that's what's uh, causing this kind of bit of a counterclockwise rotation and then further on down to the south we've got a couple of uh, some leftover showers down here and there were a few thunderstorms those are continuing to uh, sort of to fizzle on out if you will a little bit more but uh, we'll continue to see more of these showers and again there's more of these this front which is sort of lying across the area right now and that is going to be the focal point again for more of these showers so I've got that little mention here this morning mid 70s and humidity is not bad I mean there's still some out there but it is lower than where it has been in recent months mornings. We'll make it up into the low 80s late morning and a stray shower left over here or there around the area, primarily off to the uh, west and to the northwest. And then we make it up into the mid 80s, 86 at noon and then only this is nice. Great news. Only 92 for a high temperature today. More scattered showers and a couple of thunderstorms uh, around the area. Again, not everybody's going to be seeing rain, but if you didn't yesterday, hopefully you will today. So just pretty much cloudy skies, partly cloudy skies by early afternoon. Then the storm showers and thunderstorms start to pop up here or there. Sort of again, hit or miss. It's going to be just uh, uh, the luck of the draw. Basically, if indeed you do see some of this rain and that's going to be the situation into this evening as well. Other thing we're going to be watching and we still have this feature lying across here. We'll still have a chance for some rain around here uh, tomorrow, although less chance is this feature right here in the Gulf of Mexico. It is just a bit of a wave and that is forecast to come on shore and that's where the majority of the rain would be. Now it depends on what model you look at, whether it takes a very far east path or if it comes a little closer in here. So that's something we got to watch the next couple of days and that's going to be Thursday as well as Friday as that low moves on shore. So again, further to the west, more of us are going to be seeing rain later on in the week. As of right now, kind of leaning toward it, leaning further off to the east. 86 degrees at noon today. Partly cloudy skies. A couple of those leftover showers around here this morning. And then 92 for high temperature. Actually below normal. Strike up the van for that one. Some scattered showers and thunderstorms around here. Uh, lesser chances of rain tomorrow and going in through the rest of the week, even though we will have one or two of those showers still hanging around here. Uh, it's going to be very hit or miss. Watching that low out in the Gulf and then going into the weekend. You want to talk about that or not? Um, optional? No, not not yet. Well, okay. we can talk about this though, because that's yes. just blowing well, my yeah, mind. Well, yeah, Fourth of July. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is the Fourth of July on Monday, yeah, but yeah. it's going to be hot it's again. Be so. Hot. Okay. Yes, I'm just saying that with a low voice, but uh, at least we do have more rain chances around the area today in the next couple of days. So. I want you to be hot. Yes, there. but we will enjoy the quick break. Yes. For now. Thank you, Mike. Right now, <laughs> 453, 76 degrees. And coming up next, Drake is back at the top of the Billboard music charts.
A true crime show back for season two plus Drake back at the top of the music charts. For the latest what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. You are all persons of interest in this case. True crime podcast fans, it's your lucky day. Only Murders in the Building is back today for season two. Steve Martin, Martin Short, and Selena Gomez once again on the case. And the season starts with their characters being interrogated by police. So I asked in real life, who would be the first to flip on the others? Oh, I think Marty would sell us out in a second. <laughs> I said me, you said Marty. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I think definitely I would in one second to survive mm -hmm. in one second. But I think before I could get the words out, Selena would have sold us. I would have pushed you. Yeah, up. absolutely. No, as soon as I saw the police coming toward me, I'd go, Marty Short. <laughs> the first two episodes of season two of Only Murders in the Building are out now on Hulu. The music charts dripping with Drake. The rapper rules Billboard's album and single charts. His album Honestly Nevermind debuts atop the Billboard 200, his 11th number one album. And the song Jimmy Cook stops the Billboard Hot 100, also his 11th number one. He's the first solo male star to simultaneously debut atop both charts twice. Better Call Carol? Here's a guest star no one saw coming. Carol Burnett will play a role in the final season of Better Call Saul, which debuts August 15th on AMC. And happy birthday to comedy legend Mel Brooks. The writer, director, producer, and actor is 96 today, while Oscar-winning actress Kathy Bates is 74. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. Three minutes till 576 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, at least 46 people found dead in a tractor trailer on the southwest side. We're going to give you a live update just ahead. And checking the roads with Transguide right now. There's that construction that Stephen gave us a heads up about. 37 at Houston Street downtown. Exit is closed. Are there any other spots around town you need to be aware of? He is in studio. He'll have an update coming up. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Okay. I believe we could use about two or three more bodies inside the truck. Some more backboards. We're continuing our breaking news coverage. 46 people found dead in and around a tractor trailer on the southwest side. 16 people transported to area hospitals. We will have the very latest coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we're at 76 degrees, uh, kind of nice this morning. We're going to be checking in with Mike later in the newscast. Well, first this morning, part of Quintana Road on San Antonio Southwest side is still a crime scene this morning. The site where San Antonio police found dozens of people dead in a suspected failed smuggling operation. The total so far is 46 people that are dead, more than a dozen in local hospitals. Police say all of them had been traveling in the back of a big rig in suffocating temperatures. Katrina Weber is live at the scene near Quintana Road and Casson. We understand there were some children involved. Is there any word on their status this morning, Katrina? Yes, good morning. Uh, well, first of all, police tell us that there were no children among the dead. Four children are in local hospitals. And like all the other survivors, they are being treated, we understand, for heat-related illnesses. Now, the truck that they all were in is about 100 yards down this road here on Quintana Road. But we suspect that later on this morning, it will be the woods in this area that come under the spotlight. Police told us that they expect to search this area after daylight to make sure there's no one else who they might have missed last night. Of people who potentially ran from the truck, although the Department of Homeland Security has taken over this case, it did first come to the attention of SAPD. Officers discovered the situation after getting a call from someone in this area. That person reported hearing cries for help from the truck, which was parked here on Quintana Road. Inside, officers found people dead, the total now up to 46. 16 others, including those four children I mentioned, are in the hospital. And first responders were not prepared for what they found. We're not supposed to open up a truck and see stacks of bodies in there. Um, none of us come to work imagining that. Now, Chief Charles Hood told us that firefighters will have to undergo a debriefing to deal with what they found here. Now, as far as the case goes, federal authorities will be dealing with that. Police say that that includes figuring out the role that three other people played in this situation. Those people arrested or taken into custody by SAPD yesterday, but at the time they were not able to tell us how they fit into this whole picture. 
Reporting live from the southwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. More to come there. Well, there's been a lot of reaction coming in regarding the situation here in San Antonio. Texas Governor Greg Abbott took to Twitter. He said, quote, at least 42 people found dead inside a truck carrying migrants in Texas. These deaths are on Biden. They're a result of his deadly open border policies. They show the deadly consequences of his refusal to enforce the law. Meanwhile, U.S. Representative Joaquin Castro also took to Twitter and called the loss of life a tragedy, but he also spoke about the politics surrounding immigration, saying, quote, we must end Title 42, which has put desperate oppressed people in grave danger or death, end quote. Well, new reaction from people who live near where all of this happened. R.J. Marcus is live for us this morning with details on neighbors learning about this horrible news just miles away from their homes. Good morning, R.J. Yeah, good morning, Mark and Stephanie. Obviously here a lot quieter this morning as there's just media and a couple of police officers behind me still trying to sort of take care of this scene until we get more officers and officials out here, as Katrina just mentioned. But you can imagine that last night this was a very busy and a bit of a confusing area out here uh, near Quintana Road as neighbors kind of made their way to just try and figure out what was going on. So the Hidden Cove Creek, Indian Creek neighborhood, this is on the other side of this wooded area. So this is about five miles from where this terrible discovery was made last night. Many people who live in this area came down here to see what happened and just to get more information. Again, just try and get more answers as they saw a lot of police activity and a lot of things going on. And there is also a park and elementary school that divides Quintana Road and that neighborhood. So again, this is a pretty busy, interesting residential area, but a little bit cut off from this area down here in Quintana Road. But obviously these neighbors knew that something had happened, something was wrong when they saw the police activity and heard the helicopters flying overhead. First and foremost is prayer, uh, community support. I think we need our community, especially here in San Antonio after what happened in Uvalde and now this. Um, it's just heart-wrenching and we need each other. We need a support from all the community to help bear um, this situation. All right, there, right there, you heard from a couple of local religious officials. Again, neighbors here saying that they came by to see and they really don't understand what had happened here. They just don't know why, you know, a trailer was left with this many amount of people here and just trying to figure anything out. Another neighbor said that, um, you know, they were just there, these people maybe just looking for a better life or a better type of situation. Um, again, a lot of questions here that are trying to be figured out, trying to be answered this morning as we continue to follow the latest with this investigation and we'll try and get more reaction from religious officials and again talk to more neighbors out here that uh, talked to some of our crews last night we'll continue to give you more of their reaction throughout the morning reporting from the southwest side rj marquez case at 12 news thank you rj and we are closely following this story on layer on online and on air you can stay on top of our social media pages and our website at ksat.com Good morning, everyone. And yeah, it was so great to see some of the rain around the area yesterday. We got a little bit, and we're going to show you uh, radar in a moment. And if you didn't get rain yesterday, we do have more chances later on today. So all is not lost. 77 degrees right now. The dew point, that bottom number, is down to 64. So yes, we still have some humidity, but it's a whole lot more pleasant than, you know, in recent memory in the mornings. And when was the last time we saw numbers like that? As a matter of fact, last time it's been about a month or more since we only had a high temperature in the low 90s. 92 is what we're going for, which is actually a degree below normal for the first time in it seems like forever. The aquifer dropped down two tenths of a foot. Of course, check with your local municipalities as far as any watering restrictions and mold are also on the low side. So got a couple of leftover showers hanging around here. Of course, we had those uh, bigger thunderstorms yesterday especially up around Kamal County, dropped temperatures 20 degrees when uh, those storms hit and also produced big outflow boundaries and windy conditions. And actually, that produced uh, winds were strong enough to prompt uh, severe thunderstorm warnings up around Kamal County yesterday afternoon. That's going to be the exception rather than the rule, although the atmosphere is kind of set up for some, uh, some blustery winds. A couple of uh, sh leftover showers in portions of the hill country. Notice how these are almost working their way in kind of a counterclockwise direction, sort of swinging out here and now swing back down to the uh, 
down toward the southeast. A few of them around Lakey into portions of Bandera near Kerrville, and they're sort of dying off. I've just got the mention of a couple leftover showers around here this morning, and then there's a few more well down to the southwest, and those are continuing to kind of push down to the uh, south and uh, across the river over there into Mexico. But like I said, we will have more later on today. So a few showers, then sort of a lull in the action like we saw yesterday, then more are going to be popping up later on today. Again, 92 for high temperature tomorrow. Yeah, still one or two storms. Rain chances are going to start to go down, though. Mid 90s, we will be staying on the, the cooler side, if you will, uh, for the rest of the week. Couple of more showers here and there. We're going to have to watch out for some heavy rain off to the east. There's a disturbance coming out of the Gulf of Mexico, which you got to keep a close eye on is exactly what path that thing's going to be taking. Um, I'll just let you read that last word there. Yeah, it's going to be getting hotter again. Unfortunately, weekend forecast long 4th of July weekend coming up. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. Morning, sir. What's going on? We still have this road work taking place off 37 at Houston. This was something we mentioned a little bit earlier in the newscast, and you can see that exit to uh, 37 and the access road is closed or to Houston, I should say, but uh, hopefully we'll be seeing those crews wrapping up pretty soon. This was overnight, so we'll have to watch it closely, but make sure that you plan your commute ahead of time. But thankfully, nothing else is really going to cause any major slowdown as we get a wide look at the map. You notice that we do have a road closure on the south side of San Antonio. That is where that investiga investigation we mentioned earlier is taking place. That's from Quintana Road to Casson Road. So keep that in mind. You'll likely encounter those closures. So start looking for those routes if you're up early this morning. Uh, but really, if you're going to be traveling into San Antonio, we're not really concerned about any of the travel times right now. We are just about green across the board there. But keep in mind right now, 27 minutes on 281 southbound if you're heading in from Bulverde. Not looking bad right now. Just yet, but back here at 37 at Houston, we'll watch this area closely and hopefully have a better update coming up in the next few minutes. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, San Antonio police say a woman is dead after she was shot and killed on the city's west side overnight. It happened around midnight in the 200 block of Lowly, not far from Caleba Road. Police say the woman was walking with her boyfriend when someone in a car pulled up and started talking to her about some business. And police say when the woman said her boyfriend had a gun, a suspect in the vehicle started shooting, hitting the woman in the back and face. She was later pronounced dead at the scene. The boyfriend was not hurt. No word yet on any suspect information. 511, 76 degrees. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning. We are liking that 76 degrees. Pretty mild and looking forward to these breaks in temperatures. We'll be checking with Mike later on. By 14, now to more of the impact on the Supreme Court's abortion ruling. New legal battles are being fought in several states. ABC's Justin Finch has the latest. This morning, new fallout from the Supreme Court decision to overturn Roe v. Wade as the sudden change in health care becomes the focus of legal battles across the country. My body, my choice. More than a dozen states had so-called trigger laws in place to immediately ban or limit abortion when Roe was overturned. Now, judges in two of those states, Utah and Louisiana, have temporarily blocked the trigger law from taking effect, saying the states are unprepared for such a significant change. The judges granted temporary restraining orders requested by abortion rights activists, allowing more time for the courts to hear challenges. We will get care to patients and get patients to care. And we have to fight state by state now in order to make sure that people can get that. In California, where abortion remains legal, voters will decide the issue this fall after Governor Gavin Newsom signed an executive order placing the right to an abortion on the ballot in November. Meanwhile, the White House is downplaying calls to build abortion clinics on federal land. Vice President Kamala Harris telling CNN the administration is not discussing the idea. I think that what is most important right now is that we ensure that the restrictions that the states are trying to put up um, that would prohibit a woman from exercising what we still maintain is her right, that we do everything we can to empower women to not only seek, but to receive the care where it is available. And now pharmacies nationwide are placing limits on the emergency contraceptive known as Plan B. The over-the-counter drug is different than the abortion pill prescribed by doctors. CVS, Walmart, and Rite Aid are capping the number of Plan B pills a customer can buy as demand surges in the wake of the Supreme Court's ruling. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. 
Back here at home, 516, 76 degrees. Google is setting a timeline to shut down its Google Hangouts feature. Details on new Samsung and a new Samsung and Starbucks collaboration on a Galaxy phone and earbud cases. Itchy, squirmy, family not getting clean. Get Charmin Ultra Strong. Go get them. It just cleans better with a diamond weave texture your family can use less while still getting clean. Goodbye, itchy squirm. Hello, clean bottom. <laughs> <laughs> we all go. Why not enjoy the go with Charmin? And for a shower fresh clean feeling, try Charmin Flushable Wipes. More and more cat parents are feeding Tastefuls from Blue Buffalo because it's tasty and healthy. Wow. And now Blue Tastefuls comes in single serve portions. Just snap it, peel it, pop it, chop it. Pick up Tastefuls singles and find out why one taste is all it takes. Oh, what a good time we will have. You can make it happen again. Voltaren, the joy of movement. Good morning, everyone. Time now is just about 520. Let's get a look at your morning commute. If you plan to hit the roads in the next few moments, just be able to look at. We still have some road work taking place off 37 near Houston, where that exit is closed. But elsewhere, looks like things are still relatively quiet, so you can enjoy your drive wherever your destination may take you. But taking you right to the map, of course, we still have that closure on the south side where that active investigation is taking place. But other than that, we are going to continue to watch these roads. So some of those active construction spots may hinder your path. But keep in mind, this is for those overnight commuters. Bridge construction continues to take place at least up until this Friday over on the northwest side near Loop 1604. Nine in the evening at five in the morning. So for those early bird commuters, make sure that you plan accordingly. Eastbound main lane full closure from Kyle Steel Parkway to Chase Hill Boulevard. But other than that, things seem to be, seem to be moving just fine, Mike. Thank you very much, sir. And boy, some folks really, really lucked out yesterday. Look at that rain gauge, three quarters of an inch. That is just absolutely beautiful. And then out of the airport, it was nothing but a trace and, you know, hit or miss. And that's what we were expecting. And that's going to be the situation again today. So hopefully you're going to be getting some uh, some decent rain later on. There's nothing obviously showing up as of right now here in town, but we do have uh, just a few leftover showers. And if you sort of uh, kind of zoom out just a little bit here and notice how there's almost a bit of a uh, a low right up here and it's not really that big of a deal. It's just causing somewhat of a uh, counterclockwise rotation and counterclockwise movement of some of these showers right here, here, which is why these are now sort of working their way down to the sort of south to uh, southeast and then further on down to the south. Uh, a couple of leftover ones just south of uh, Eagle Pass and those are starting to diminish them. So still have a mention of a couple of showers in the uh, in the forecast this morning. It's not going to be a whole lot, just these few leftovers here and there. And then once we get past that lull in the action this morning, we'll start to see more fire up. So mid 70s this morning again that just a few leftover showers, the 20 10% chance of rain, not a big deal this morning and temperatures will be up to 86 degrees at noon. Just to compare yesterday before that that front started working its way on through here and the rain and the clouds moved on in here. We we're up to 98 degrees already at noon, which was just the high temperature just about the day before that. So whole lot different story today and we're only going to make it up to 92 later on today. 40% chance for a few more scattered showers and thunderstorms around the area later on today. Here's the uh, computer model and uh, this one did initialize very well with some of those leftover showers up there to the north and then again we get in that lull period mid morning. Then as we start to get into the afternoon hours, more of those scattered showers and a few thunderstorms are going to be firing up. And you know, this is not written in stone, so it doesn't mean it's going to be right there in town and not elsewhere. It's just a matter of, uh, again, the luck of the draw, I guess is the best way to put it as far as we're going to be seeing any rain. Let's jump ahead real quickly and watch what happens. Tomorrow we'll still have a couple of more showers left over, uh, lesser chances, but then we're watching a disturbance come in, in here out of the Gulf of Mexico. This 
low. And this particular model takes a path that is further to the west and just about right on top of Gonzales and then working its way up to the northeast. Then we'd get some more wraparound showers. Another computer model has the path well off to the east of us. So this is something we're really going to have to keep an eye on as far as the exact track that that low takes coming in here out of the Gulf of Mexico. And that's going to be Thursday into Friday. 86 degrees at noon today, partly cloudy skies. So leftover showers this morning, that lull in the action. Then they refired later on this afternoon. 92 for a high temperature today. And then we get into the next couple of days. Lesser rain chances. Temperatures are still going to stay low to mid 90s. And we have, again, track or keep track of and keep watching the uh, the path that low takes out of the, the Gulf of Mexico and then very hot this weekend for the 4th of July. And the fireworks stores are open. Yes, indeed. But be careful any outdoor fireworks with all the dry brush around there. It's always dicey this time of year. Unless yeah. we uh, have had significant rain, which hasn't happened. Mm -hmm. 524, 76 degrees. Go ahead and look at your winning lotto numbers. Pick three, nine, three, six, fireball one, daily four, eight, two, three, eight, fireball four. Your cash five numbers 14, 19, 20, 23, 31, Texas two step 5, 19, 23, 31, with a bonus ball of 32. And Powerball 11, 13, 18, 30, 37, Powerball 16, Power Play 3. In today's Tech Fights, Amazon is reportedly gearing up for a second big Prime event this year. Reports say the additional Prime Day would take place later this year, making it the first time Amazon held two exclusive shopping events in a single year. Amazon's usual Prime Day event is set for July 12th and 13th. The clock is officially ticking towards the end of Google Hangouts. Free personal users of the messaging system are being migrated to chat. Hangouts will remain usable as a desktop app until November. Google says users will receive a one-month warning before it goes away entirely. Samsung has teamed up with Starbucks to create a fun line of cases for its devices. The case for Galaxy Buds looks like a coffee mug, latte art included. There's also a variety of options for the Galaxy S22 model phones. Coffee and cases, the perfect blend. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. Very cute. Time now, 528 and 76 degrees for now. Still ahead on GMSA, we're continuing our breaking news coverage. Officials say dozens of people are dead after being trapped inside a sweltering 18-wheeler on the southwest side. We will have a live update. We're not supposed to open up a truck and see stacks of bodies in there. Um, none of us come to work imagining that. Grim description this morning from San Antonio Fire Chief Charles Hood. 46 people found dead in a trailer on San Antonio Southwest side. We'll have the latest this morning coming up. And taking a look outside with a live cam, we are at 76 degrees for now. Uh, we had some showers yesterday and expecting some more today. But first, San Antonio's mayor is calling it a horrific human tragedy. What appears to be a failed human smuggling operation. All of the victims had been piled into the back of a big rig with no air conditioning or water. Katrina Weber is live on the city's southwest side along Quintana Road near Casson. And Katrina, you mentioned earlier that three other people are in police custody. Are they facing any charges? Well, that's right, Stephanie. Uh, right now, that will be up to the Department of Homeland Security. They have taken over this case. Now, that truck where the people were found is about 100 yards down this road here on Quintana Road. I just want to point out that within the last 15 minutes, we did see one of those big King Kong wreckers, the kind you often see at crashes involving 18-wheelers. It came right here, headed down that way. Now, we don't know exactly what role that tow truck will play in the situation, whether they plan to tow away uh, this truck if they're finished processing it. We'll find out later on. Now that truck itself was a stifling hot box by all descriptions, a suffocating situation for the people who were piled inside. Fire Chief Charles Hood told us some of the people who they found inside were still hot to the touch. The situation first came to light around six last night when police got a call from someone who heard cries for help coming from the truck. Inside, officers found bodies piled up. The total number of dead is at 46. 16 other people, including four children at various hospitals. According to Mayor Ron Nuremberg, this is the worst case of human smuggling deaths in San Antonio history. Individuals who are no longer with us, who had families, um, who were 
likely trying to find uh, a better life. Now that sight of all those bodies came as a shock even to first responders and the fire chief was telling us that uh, his his firefighters were not ready for that type of situation to see that. Now police will be looking for even more today we understand after daylight they say that they are going to search this area for anyone who may have run off late last night. In the meantime the investigation will be in the hand again of federal agents. Reporting live on the southwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. Leaders in the religious community calling on San Antonio and South Texas residents to unite in prayers in support. RJ Marcus continues our live coverage this morning, and he is on the southwest side. Yeah, good morning, Mark and Stephanie. Um, you know, obviously, whenever there's a situation like this, you always call on our religious spiritual leaders to kind of help people deal with uh, some confusion, some grief over this entire situation. Again, at speaking, you know, you think about Uvalde, that happened a little bit more than a month ago, and now we have this. So these have been two just massive, heartbreaking stories over the past month and a half here in our area. So leaders with the San Antonio Archdiocese and Franciscan priests are asking for prayers for of course, the 46 people that died here on Monday night, that being last night, and of course, the others that are recovering in the hospital this morning, and also for the support for first responders and those involved in the investigation who, of course, had to witness, um, you know, what we heard, the stacks of bodies in that trailer had to help out with this investigation. You just heard from the mayor right there in Katrina's live shot, um, obviously shaken, a lot of our community officials shaken as well as they talked to the media last night to give sort of their initial um, details on this investigation. So there's just a lot of grief, a lot of, uh, a lot of things that need to be answered here. Now, of course, spiritual leaders are there for anyone. They say that anyone who needs to someone to maybe speak out or for some sort of spiritual support uh, can reach out to them. First and foremost is prayer, uh, community support. I think we need our community especially here in San Antonio after what happened in Uvalde and now this. Um, it, it's just heart-wrenching and we need each other. We need a support from all the community to help bear um, this situation. Yes, yeah, Stephen, Mark, along with uh, obviously police officials and investigators that were here, a lot of spiritual leaders were here last night uh, praying at the scene right here on Quintana Road as they try and help people cope with yet another tragedy in our area. They say that if you need someone to talk to about how this is impacting you emotionally or just to deal with uh, some of the grief factor here, you can call the Ecumenical Center. That number is 210-616-0885. Again, 210 one six zero eight eight five and that is for counseling and they ask that anyone looking for any sort of answers or just support in this type of situation can reach out to them reporting live from the southwest side rj marquez case at 12 news and homeland security secretary alejandro mayorkas is also responding to the incident he tweeted quote i am heartbroken by the tragic loss of life today and i'm praying for those still fighting for their lives Far too many lives have been lost as individuals, including families, women, and children, uh, taking this dangerous journey. We are closely following this story on air and online because stay up to date on our social media pages and on KSAT.com. As we continue to update this story, you can get updates right on your phone. Good morning, everyone. Well, if you did not see rain yesterday, uh, you do have a chance to get uh, some more showers and thunderstorms later on this afternoon. Everything is uh, fairly tranquil here in town right now. Temperature stands at 77 degrees, dew point 64, which means, yes, there is some humidity out there, but that's a lot lower than where it has been uh, in recent memory. And we do have a breeze out of the north. So that front, which moved through yesterday, that was the triggering me mechanism for those showers and thunderstorms. That is still just to the south. We had this uh, northerly wind out there and with that front still sort of lying across the area that's again going to be the focal point for some more showers later on today and a couple of storms we do have a few left over in portions of the hill country they're continuing to sort of uh, swing around and come down to the southeast it's not really anything of any consequence as of right now there were some bigger thunderstorms down to the southwest earlier this morning. Those are continuing to work their way down to the south and sort of die off a little bit so we will 
see things sort of uh, get a break in the action this morning and then refire later on this afternoon. Mold is on the low side. The updated pollen count is going to be coming out again later on this morning, about uh, 7, 730 or so. That's a great number, 92. Before the rain moved in yesterday and we had those outflow boundaries to help cool us down, we did hit 101 here in town. And in New Braunfels, it was up in the upper 90s. Those storms hit and temperatures dropped 20 degrees in one hour thanks to those storms. And when that gust front moved through here, temperatures dropped off about 11 degrees just in the, the matter of a blink of an eye. But it's going to be nice to be only at 92 degrees, 40% chance for some more rain. Rain chances do stick around the rest of the week, albeit very small rain chances. We're watching something come out of the Gulf and the 4th of July forecast coming up. Time safe for traf traffic authority. <laughs> Beg your pardon. Two days in a row. Two days in Steve. a row, What's Mike. <laughs> All right, we're going to wait till Thursday. That's throwback Thursday. We talked about this. <laughs> All right, let's get a look at the roadways. 281 uh, winding way. We're not really seeing a lot out there. 37 at Salado Creek. It's just a copy and paste situation in the last half hour. However, 37 at Houston, we still have that work taking place there. Keep in mind that exit to Houston and the southbound lanes is closed as we have those crews out there working to improve our roadways. So give them a break and give yourself plenty of time. I did not Hackberry, things look fine there. And as we get a look at our map, just a lot of those active construction spots, and we're going to continue to break those down for you as the morning does go on if these roads stay quiet. But keep in mind, we still have that active investigation where Katrina and RJ are at on the southwest side of town, where we do see that Casson Road from, uh, pardon me, Quintana Road to Casson Road is closed at this time. Of course, uh, we're going to watch this area closely as well off 151, where a crash just popped up there, but it doesn't look like it's causing any issues, at least just yet. Travel times also look in good shape if you're coming in from any of these communities, so no need to rush, but about a 33 minute drive time to downtown SA. But back here in town, things are moving just fine. We'll continue to watch these roads closely. Give you those updates here on GMSA. Mark stuff. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, six people and four pets managed to escape a house fire overnight on the northeast side. This happened just after midnight in the live in Live Oak in the 13,000 block at Alta Murano. Fire crews said the people inside heard popping and smelled smoke and were able to get out OK. Officials say the fire was contained to the garage and two vehicles that were in the driveway. However, they estimate there was still $100,000 worth of damage. The people who live there are now staying with family. Russian attacks ramping up in Ukraine. The latest deadly airstrike hitting a shopping mall where as many as 1,000 people were believed to be inside. As CNN's Jen Sullivan reports, this comes as G7 leaders met in Germany to discuss how to respond to Russia's invasion. A terrifying scene Monday afternoon in Ukraine when a bustling mall with some 1,000 people inside was the target of a Russian missile strike. The shopping center in the central city of Kremenchuk was engulfed in flames after the attack, raising concerns about mass casualties. <laughs> On Sunday, 180 miles north in the capital, Kyiv, Russian missiles hit an apartment block, tearing families apart and leaving homes in ruins. Losing loved ones is the worst fate, she said. We do not deserve this. This senseless war, and uh, we have to do everything to stop this war. These strikes come as G7 leaders gather for a summit in Germany, focusing their attention on how to respond to Russian attacks. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky pleading to the West for help. We need a powerful air defense, modern, fully effective, which can ensure complete protection against these missiles. We talk about this every day with our partners. There are already some agreements, and partners need to move faster if they are really partners, not observers. A source telling CNN the U.S. plans to announce as soon as this week that it has purchased a new missile defense system for Ukraine. I'm Jen Sullivan reporting. 542, 76 degrees. And coming up next, how major corporate companies are reacting to the Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe versus Wade. Outside with live cam, we had some showers in the area yesterday, some much needed rainfall, and we need to have another chance at a shower or two today. We'll check in with Mike coming up, and we'll go back to traffic and get an update from our Stephen Cavazzo. Stick around. Quarter to six, welcome back. Corporate America is reacting to the U.S. Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe versus Wade. As CNN's Jen Sullivan reports, dozens of companies are now pledging support for their employees seeking an abortion. Taking a stance, a growing list of well-known companies are responding to the Supreme Court's historic ruling on abortion, pledging support and financial assistance for employees. 
companies are talking about social issues all the time, and this is one that affects a lion's share of their population of employees. And so to stay silent on it, I can't imagine why any company would be willing to do that. These are some of the dozens of corporate giants extending their help to staff, including Nike, Kroger, Zillow, and Alaska Airlines. Many of them reimbursing travel expenses for employees seeking abortions who live in states that ban or restrict the procedure. Yelp is one of those companies, calling the decision a denial of human rights and a threat to workplace gender equality. We believe that all people deserve the right to choose for their own bodies um, whatever it is that they choose. Starbucks also covering travel, saying it will always ensure workers have access to quality health care. And Netflix says it will offer a lifetime allowance of up to $10,000 for full-time employees and their dependents to cover travel expenses. Abortion is The high court's decision placing companies in the crosshairs, balancing controversial social issues and their own corporate values, and those of a diverse workforce and consumer base. I think for any employer that cares about issues of diversity, equity, and inclusion, to stay silent on such an issue is really just not, not okay. For today's Consumer Watch, I'm Jen Sullivan. 547, still 76 degrees. Let's look outside the trans guide, looking over there at Highway 90 at Couples. Things are moving there and also at Highway 281 and Winding Way. We'll be right back. Let's get a check out your morning commute 10 minutes before 6 a.m. Right now, things are moving fine. 281 at Winding Way. We showed you that shot earlier. Elsewhere, things not really seen any issues, but 37 at Houston. That word work still taking place. Keep in mind, this is in the southbound lanes of I-37. That exit toward Houston closed at this time as crews are working to improve the roadways. So again, give them a break. Let's go ahead and take a look at the map right now. Just a lot of those active construction spots. One of the areas you need to be on the lookout for, at least within the next hour or two, is going to be here at State Highway 123 in Guadalupe County. Striping operations continues to take place or actually starts today. Should be wrapping on Friday, July 1st, but this will start at 8 in the morning, wrap at 5.30 in the afternoon. Crews tend to get out there a little bit earlier, so again, make sure you are planning your commute accordingly. Single lane closures in both directions from Angel Lane to FM 477. So plan ahead, make sure that you are buckled up, both eyes on the wheel and both hands on the road. Actually, the other way around. Mike Ostrange, I think I need some coffee over here. <laughs> I guess, yeah, I knew what you're talking about, though. Pay attention to what you're doing <laughs> Thank out you. there. All right, great picture from New Braunfels yesterday and that huge, huge rain shaft from one of those uh, thunderstorms that did pop up. And it was those storms in Kamal County that produced those outflow boundaries. I mean, think of it as if you took a water balloon and dropped it on the on the ground, it would, you know, in a perfect circle kind of spread out like that. That's sort of like what happens in a system like this when you get all that very cold air loft and all that rain coming down and it hits the ground and it just spreads on out those winds that drop down with that air force down with those big uh, downpours out there and so that's why we did have those outflow boundaries it was great and you may see those uh, later on today if you grab uh, the weather authority app and you can check out radar on that and it was this perfect circle that formed around some of those storms up there in New Braunfels and spread on out that's what helped to drop temperatures down in other locations like here in town and then also helped to uh, touch off more showers and thunderstorms as the afternoon rolled on now, not much out there as of right now. We've got just a few scattered uh, light showers in portions of the hill country right now. Just a couple of them over here right around Medina just south of Lakey near Concan. And then there are a few more down around uh, Carrizo Springs kind of sliding off and to the west to southwest. And those are sort of dying off. And we will see a few more developing, obviously, uh, later on this afternoon. But this is kind of the, the leftovers, if you will. Yes, there are a couple of more further on up there to the north. And those are probably going to be dying down before they ever reach our area as well. So as far as the forecast this morning, still got the mention, you know, the 20, 10, 20 percent chance one of those leftover showers around here. Like I said, even though they are going to be dying off this morning, we get that break in the action. Then things are going to start to fire back up later on this afternoon. We'll make it in through the 80s, mid 80s at noon as opposed to 98 like yesterday at noon and then just the low 90s later on this afternoon and rain chances 30 40 percent chance for a few more scattered showers and thunderstorms around the area which this computer model does a I think a very good job depicting we get the break in the action this morning a leftover shower or two then they start to fire back up later on this afternoon and again it's going to be 
a hit or miss luck of the draw type situation, whether you see showers and or a couple of thunderstorms. This model does have some right here around uh, Wilson as well as Wilson County, as well as here in town, whether that comes to be we, is wait and see situation. But uh, yeah, it's at least some folks will be seeing more rain again today. Once again, jumping into the future, Tomorrow we will still have a few more showers left around here. Then we're going to be watching this low coming in out of the Gulf of Mexico. Now some computer models keep it. Now this particular run just decided to shift this further off to the west on this model. So this would be a very rainy situation then for us on Friday. Other models keep it further off to the east. So this is going to be one of those situations that we definitely have to be watching going into the next couple of days, especially like I said, Thursday and Friday as to the exact path that that low takes coming in there out of uh, the Gulf of Mexico. Further to the east, less rain for us. Further to the west, a lot more rain. 86 degrees, partly cloudy skies today at noon, and then high temperature gets up to 92. A few scattered showers and thunderstorms. As of right now, it looks like um, keeping rain chances on the lower side for Thursday, Friday. We'll have that better chance of rain today. And then after any rain chances, just going to be a hot 4th of July weekend. We'll be back. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the latest on the tragedy in Texas. At least 46 people found dead in a tractor trailer in a suspected human smuggling operation. The investigation into that this morning. And the latest fallout from the Supreme Court's decision overturning Roe v. Wade. The battle now shifting to the states. And our new series on finding the positive in the negative. This morning, we're looking at how to turn a regret into a force for good. That and so much more on GMA. We'll head in the next hour of GMSA. KSAT is staying on top of our big story this morning. Those 46 people found dead in a trailer, 16 others in the hospital on the southwest side. We have local team coverage from the scene as this story continues to unfold. But we'll be checking on your morning commute 281 at Winding Way, 90 West at Zarzamora, and 37 at Houston Street, where we've had some lingering construction. We'll talk to Stephen coming up. We're not supposed to open up a truck and see stacks of bodies in there. Um, none of us come to work imagining that. It's very sad that that they had to go like that. You know, they were just they were just looking for a better life, and for them to just lose their life just to try to get over here and just try to make a better life for them and their kids. It's just heart wrenching, and we need each other. We need a support from all the community to help bear um, this situation. Good morning to you. It is Tuesday, June 28th. Thank you for starting your morning with us. We're going to get to weather and traffic in just a few minutes. But first, our top story this morning. Stifling temperatures with no air conditioning and no water. Those were the conditions for people piled into the back of a big rig. Conditions would lead to dozens of deaths. It is being called the worst case in San Antonio's history related to human smuggling. Katrina Weber is live where it all came to light along Quintana Road on the city's southwest side. Katrina, we know law enforcement has been there all night. Have there been any, any new developments? Well, they have not shared any of the details of the investigation with us overnight, but we do know that police have been waiting for daylight so they can resume their search of the area. They told us that they do plan to comb the woods here just to see if there's anyone who they may have missed last night. Now, that big rig itself is down uh, this road, about 100 yards down this road. That is also where investigators have a command post set up. Now, this case first came to light for San Antonio police around 6 last night. They received a call from someone who heard cries for help coming from the back of 818 Wheeler. Inside, police found dozens of bodies. The last count has 46 people dead. 16 others, including four children, are being treated in hospitals around town. Now, the site is one that first responders won't soon forget. We're not supposed to open up a truck and see stacks of bodies in there. Um, none of us come to work imagining that. The fire chief Charles Hood says some of his crews will have to undergo a debriefing just to cope with what they saw. He says that some of those bodies, some of those people were still hot to the touch when they found them. Although this case began with SAPD, 
It is now in the hand of federal investigators, including the Department of Homeland Security. We expect that we will know more about this later today. Reporting live on the southwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. And taking over from Katrina here. So we are also in the same location this morning. And as we have been talking about throughout the night and into last night, um, this is a rural area. It is very secluded as well. Even on our way in, my uh, our photojournalist and I, Stephen Chavez, we had to kind of go around a couple of barriers just to get to this area. So it is very wooded, very secluded. But there are also people that live in this general area as well. And that being the Hidden Cove Indian Creek neighborhood. So they Basically, people there are saying that they're just kind of confused as to what may have happened and trying to just kind of get any sort of answers as they try and figure out what uh, occurred here last night. Again, multiple bodies found here in that tractor trailer in sweltering heat. These residents trying to just understand maybe kind of, um, you know, as they came out here, trying to understand what occurred and trying to figure out more answers to their questions. And here's a little bit of what reaction they had last night to the news here of this uh, human trafficking operation. I mean, these people come to San Antonio to, you know, to come and work. I mean, they really don't do nothing to nobody, you know. That's my concern. But how did they bring these people at least and just leave them there? That's very sad that that they had to go like that. You know, they were just they were just looking for a better life and for them to just lose their life just to try to get over here and just try to make a better life for them and their kids. All right, so Mr. Rivetta also told us that he's from the Valley, so unfortunately he has seen situations like this in the past. And if you guys also remember, back in July of 2017, there was another similar situation like this where there were 39 migrants that were found in a sweltering tractor trailer as well. In that case, eight people died. But again, here, many residents trying to figure out what happened here. There is a school and a park that sort of divides Quintana Road and that neighborhood that we just talked about. So these residents still trying to uh, come to grips with what occurred here. And we will continue to follow this investigation throughout the morning as we continue to get more answers. Reporting from the Southwest side, RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. Okay, Katrina and RJ, thank you very much. A lot of reaction coming in overnight on this situation. Governor Greg Abbott took to Twitter. He said, quote, at least 42 people found dead inside truck carrying migrants in Texas. These deaths are on Biden. They're the result of his deadly open border policies. They show the deadly consequences of his refusal to enforce the law. Meanwhile, U.S. Representative Joaquin Castro also took to Twitter and called the loss of life a tragedy. But he also spoke about the politics surrounding immigration, saying, quote, we must end Title 42, which has put desperate oppressed people in grave danger of death, end quote. This is a story we will be following closely throughout the day, both on air and online. So keep it right here on KSET 12 and on KSET.com. Good morning, everyone. Well, if you didn't get any rain yesterday, still have a, a decent chance of rain again today. There's nothing out there as of right now, um, but out in the hill country, a few of these showers and those are just continuing, obviously, to fizzle on out and a couple more further on down to the southwest. Those also are sort of working their way down to the southwest and fizzling on out. So we're kind of getting into the lull period, and that's going to be the situation throughout the then mid to late morning hours and into early afternoon. Then things will be Refiring 77 in town, 70 Balverde and Lost Maples at 69 degrees. The humidity is it's there. It's not bad this morning. Mold is on the low side. Of course, the updated allergen count is going to be coming out in just a little bit. And as far as the next few days are concerned, we, like I said, have that chance for a better chance for rain today. Then rain chances are going to be diminishing, although still around temperatures will stay closer to normal throughout the next few days. You're going to have to watch out for Thursday and Friday. There's a disturbance in the Gulf of Mexico, and it really depends. And still, it's kind of up in the air as far as the the exact path it's going to be taking as it moves into the state. So we'll have to watch that very closely. And then talking about the uh, long holiday weekend, 
It's going to be getting hot again. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, what's going on? There's really not been a lot going on over here, Mike. As we get a look at the roadways again, we start the morning off with not really a whole lot to talk about, but 37 at Houston. This is one of the things that we've been mentioning, uh, active construction spot that has been lingering, or lingering around, I should say, for quite some time. Now, we have this, we do know that this is in the southbound lanes of I-37. That exit toward Houston Street closed off, so we're hoping these crews will wrap up and maybe we'll have a better update before the show wraps up. But for now, maybe Make sure that you plan ahead. Now, as we get a look at the map, we aren't really seeing anything else to talk about. Again, a lot of those active construction spots. And if one of your destinations is going to be taking you into San Antonio, we're really not seeing a slowdown just yet. Right now, 37 northbound is a 28 minute drive heading in from Pleasanton about half an hour on Highway 90 coming in those eastbound lanes from Castroville and 16 minutes traveling on I-35 northbound heading in from Lytle. So we're not really worried about anything else that we're detecting just yet. Just some quiet roads, pavement and a few more folks out there this morning. We'll have more updates coming up in the next few minutes. Mark Stephanie. Stephen, thank you. New this morning, San Antonio police say a woman is dead after she was shot and killed on the city's west side overnight. It happened around midnight, the 200 block of Woolley, not far from Culebra. SAPD says a woman was walking with her boyfriend when someone in a car pulled up and started talking to her. Police say when the woman said her boyfriend had a gun, a suspect in the vehicle started shooting, hitting the woman in the back and face. She was later pronounced dead at the scene. The boyfriend was not hurt. No word yet on any suspect information. And another shooting overnight. This one on South Flora is just before 11 p.m. Investigators tell us a woman was walking down the street when someone pulled up, started yelling at her, and then fired a shot. She was in the stomach. The suspect took off. The woman was rushed to a hospital in critical condition. San Antonio police are hoping you can help them solve a shooting that happened at a San Antonio laundromat. This is a story we first told you about on Saturday morning on GMSA. Police are looking for this man. They believe he shot another man in the head outside the easy wash on Gardendale Drive. Now it happened around 2.30 on Saturday morning. Officers say he was seen talking to the two people in this red car. Call Crime Stoppers if you have any information. That number on your screen, 210-224-STOP. 609, 76 degrees. And big changes could be coming in the fight against COVID. Still to come, the new details we are learning. That's right. Plus, judges have temporarily blocked abortion bans in several states. We are tracking the very latest. And a quick look outside with live cam this morning, starting at 76 degrees. A beautiful shot out there. We are liking the break in temperatures. We'll be checking in with Mike for more possible rain. 613 now to the latest impact of the Supreme Court's abortion ruling. New legal battles are being fought in several states. ABC's Justin Finch has the latest. This morning, new fallout from the Supreme Court decision to overturn Roe v. Wade as the sudden change in health care becomes the focus of legal battles across the country. My body, my choice. More than a dozen states had so-called trigger laws in place to immediately ban or limit abortion when Roe was overturned. Now, judges in two of those states, Utah and Louisiana, have temporarily blocked the trigger law from taking effect, saying the states are unprepared for such a significant change. The judges granted temporary restraining orders requested by abortion rights activists, allowing more time for the courts to hear challenges. We will get care to patients and get patients to care. And we have to fight state by state now in order to make sure that people can get that. In California, where abortion remains legal, voters will decide the issue this fall after Governor Gavin Newsom signed an executive order placing the right to an abortion on the ballot in November. Meanwhile, the White House is downplaying calls to build abortion clinics on federal land. Vice President Kamala Harris telling CNN the administration is not discussing the idea. I think that what is most important right now is that we ensure that the restrictions that the states are trying to put up um, that would prohibit a woman from exercising what we still maintain is her right, that we do everything we can to empower women to not only seek, but to receive the care where it is available. And now pharmacies nationwide are placing limits on the emergency contraceptive known as Plan B. The over-the-counter drug is different than the abortion pill prescribed by doctors. CVS, Walmart, and Rite Aid are capping the number of Plan B pills a customer can buy as demand surges in the wake of the Supreme Court's ruling. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. 
And FDA officials will consider a new version of the COVID vaccine today. They will discuss strain-specific vaccines, including one for the Omicron variant. The current vaccines are based on the original virus. Health officials expect COVID vaccines will eventually be available annually, just like a flu shot. Well, if you're headed out the door in the next five or 10 minutes to see how traffic is looking with our expert Stephen Cavazos. Yeah, I'm still watching this 37 at Houston. We've been talking about it all morning. Uh, you know, this is actually on the south family of 37 and you can see that we do have some crews out there. They've been lingering around working to make sure that the roads are a better place for everyone to drive. But earlier the exit to Houston was closed off. Looks like it may have just opened. So hopefully these crews will wrap up before more folks start to get their morning started. But for now, just make sure you give them plenty of Room. Keep in mind again, that's in the South family to 37, not far from Houston Street. Looks like that exit toward Houston may be open, so just be careful out there. As we give you a wide look at the map, really, that's all we have to talk about. Of course, we still have that closure on the south side where that investigation is taking place, but elsewhere, a lot of those active construction spots and something that's going to be taking place later today is here off US 90, where a metal, metal guard beam uh, fence installation will take place. That should be wrapping up this Friday. That's July 1st, starts at 9 in the morning should finish around five in the afternoon. Single main closures in both single main lane closures in both directions right there at Montgomery Road. But of course, that information is posted on our website at ksat.com slash traffic. You can always head over there for the latest on anything else that could be impacting your commute time. Mike. Thank you, sir. This morning's commute is going to be dry. This afternoon's commute, kind of like yesterday, may have some rain thrown on in, depending on uh, where your, your drive this afternoon takes you. And boy, look at that. Absolutely beautiful. About an inch and a half of rain out there right around Fair Oaks Ranch. Absolutely gorgeous. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. A lot of clouds hanging around here this morning. We will see some sunshine thrown on in. That's going to help to, to heat things up, to fire things up. And we do have just a few of these uh, showers up here to the north, one or two of them well north of uh, Lano and then further on down in portions of the hill country. Any of these showers that were falling earlier this morning from Medina down toward Concan, those are pretty much all fizzled on out and then further on down to the southwest. Those are continuing to uh, fizzle on out. A couple of leftover showers down there as well. So maybe one or two little sprinkles. That's why I just keep the 20% in here throughout the rest of the morning to account for any leftover sprinkles this morning. And then we get into the, the break in the action, the lull, a little more sunshine. We heat up 86 degrees today at noon. Then rain chances start to come back up as we get into the heat of the afternoon. 92 for a high temperature. So a below normal day. That's going to be the coolest high temperature since about a month ago toward the end of May. That day we also got some rain. All right, here's a couple of computer models, long range models. First of all, yes, it does have more showers. This is kind of that broad brush uh, computer model around here. Some more showers around today and uh, even uh, going into tomorrow, although a lesser chance. Now, going into the future, there's a low a disturbance, if you will, in the Gulf of Mexico, and that's going to be coming, uh, getting pushed on shore. And it depends on which computer model uh, they have kind of complete opposite solutions with this. So this one now in the latest model run takes this the center of this low and the heaviest rain and puts it just to the west of San Antonio. And then this would make for obviously a rainier uh, situation for us Thursday going into Friday and probably even left over into Saturday. Here's a different computer model. And like I said, this one has almost the exact opposite solution. This keeps this thing way off to the east of us and we don't get really any rain from it. So obviously, do you split the difference? Just take one or the other. This is one of those situations where we really got to watch the, uh, the forecast and how these models handle this later on today, tomorrow, obviously going into the, to uh, Thursday, 86 degrees, partly cloudy skies at noon and then high temperature today. Nice 92 scattered showers and thunderstorms. Not everybody's going to be seeing rain today, but if you do, I mean, could have some decent downpours. Should be very, very lucky with that. A uh, few thunderstorms thrown on in as well. Not really forecasting anything severe, but some of those winds could get uh, stronger in some of those thunderstorms, like was the case up in Kamal County, which prompted that severe thunderstorm warning. And we'll keep temperatures in check throughout the rest of the week. Hot looking weekend. 99s by Sunday and on the 4th of July. And of course, we keep watching that disturbance coming out of the Gulf to see exactly what path that thing takes. OK, and a nice little break from the extreme heat. Thank goodness. Yes, yes. been nice. 620, about 76 degrees.
And WNBA star Brittany Griner's detention in Russia has been extended. Details ahead in your GMA First Look. People with plaque psoriasis or psoriatic arthritis are rethinking the choices they make, like the splash they create, the way they exaggerate, or the surprises they initiate. Oh, Tesla, it's a choice you can make. Oh, Tesla is not an injection or a cream. It's a pill that treats differently. For psoriasis, you can achieve clear skin with Oh, Tesla. For psoriatic arthritis, Oh, Tesla is proven to reduce joint swelling, tenderness, and pain. And the Oh, Tesla prescribing information has no requirement for routine lab monitoring. Monitoring. Don't use if you're allergic to Otesla. Otesla can cause serious allergic reactions. It may cause severe diarrhea, nausea, or vomiting. Otesla is associated with an increased risk of depression. Tell your doctor if you have a history of depression or suicidal thoughts or if these feelings develop. Some people taking Otesla reported weight loss. Your doctor should monitor your weight and may stop treatment. Upper respiratory tract infection and headache may occur. Tell your doctor about your medicines and if you're pregnant or planning to be. Otesla, show more of you. In this morning's GMA First Look, Brittany Griner's detainment extended another six months, just days before the start of her trial in Russia. Brittany, I am from ABC News. Do you want to say something? The athlete detained more than four months ago for suspicion of drug smuggling at a Russian airport, appearing for the first time in court Monday. Griner seen surrounded by security as she's escorted into the pre-trial hearing in Moscow, her trial set to begin this Friday. It was the prolongation of the arrest, not, not more than that. How does she feel? She's fine. She's fine. Does she feel? As she could be. In a statement, Griner's reps tell ABC News the fact remains that the U.S. government has determined that Brittany Griner is wrongfully detained and being used as a political pawn. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll talk live with legal analyst Dan Abrams about what Griner can expect from a Russian courtroom trial. With your GMA First Look, I'm Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Now to that big train derailment in Missouri. We're learning more about the moments after the crash on the tracks. Including some of the young school-aged passengers who jumped in trying to save lives. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the story. This morning, passengers describing the terrifying moment an Amtrak train derailed, killing at least three people. All of a sudden, the car that we were on was over and everyone was flying everywhere. The train, carrying more than 270 passengers from Los Angeles to Chicago, hit a dump truck at a railroad crossing in rural Missouri, derailing eight passenger cars and turning nearly the entire train on its side. There was dust and dirt everywhere. I was on the side of the train that hit the ground first, and so everybody on the other side fell on top of us. Seats were coming apart, bags were going everywhere, um, and then yeah, you know, after it stopped, you could smell the, the the fumes, and so people started panicking, thinking it was going to catch fire. So we tried to get out as quick as possible. Emergency responders racing to the scene as passengers climbed through the windows. You all right? Yes, sir. Sixteen Boy Scouts from Wisconsin traveling on the train also jumped into action, helping administer first aid to victims. We had one young man who. Um, provided aid to the uh, dump truck driver uh, until he expired. Uh, they just were helping immobilize people on backboards and getting them out safely. Anybody who was, uh, you know, complaining of any sort of pain, helping load them to, into ambulances. It was not immediately clear why the dump truck, its wheels seen here after the crash, was on the tracks, but authorities say there are no crossing arms at that location, which is not unusual in rural areas. It's an uncontrolled uh, cross buck intersection on a gravel road, uh, so no lights, no electronic control devices, things such as that. The crash, similar to this one Sunday in Northern California, which also left three people dead after a train collided with a car at this crossing without signals or guardrails. Back in Missouri, more than 40 people had to be hospitalized after the derailment. Federal investigators will arrive today to determine what went wrong. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Time now, 626 and 76 degrees for now. Coming up on GMSA at 9, June is National Cancer Survivor Month. And today on GMSA at 9, a local woman is sharing her story. She'll explain who helped her along the way at the hospital and her message to others facing something similar. Well, that story and much more today at 9. Now here's a look at what's coming up this morning on GMSA. Okay. I believe we could use about two or three more bodies inside the truck. Some more backboards. And I uh, believe we're going to need more medics. I, so far, I have about 
One, two, three. Probably about six or seven more patients that I can see. We're not supposed to open up a truck and see stacks of bodies in there. Um, none of us come to work imagining that. 46 individuals who are no longer with us, who had families, um, who were likely trying to find uh, a better life. We have 16 folks who are fighting for their lives in the hospital. No signs of water in the vehicle. It was a refrigerated tractor trailer but there was no uh, visible working AC unit on that rig. We're from the valley and this is something that, that is common. This is something like crossing people and seeing people cross, trying to, trying to just find a better life. Like that's, that's something common that I've seen. It is Tuesday, June 28th. Thank you for starting your morning with us. We're going to get to weather and traffic in just a few minutes, but first we're going to go to our top story this morning. Yeah, we expect to get an update later today on what's being called the worst case of human smuggling related deaths in San Antonio's history. So far, 46 people have lost their lives. 16 others, including four children, are being treated at local hospitals. All of them had been riding in the back of a big rig during sweltering temperatures with no water and no air conditioning. Katrina Weber is live on the southwest side. She's been out there all morning for GMSA along Quintana Road near Cass. And Katrina, where will the investigation go from here? Well, San Antonio police told me that they were waiting for daylight. They plan to search the woods in this area just to make sure there's no one else out there. The rest of it, though, is up to federal investigators who have taken over this case. But this actually did begin with San Antonio police. They got a call around 6 last night, someone reporting hearing cries for help coming from the back of an 18-wheeler that was parked here on Quintana Road. When officers got here, they found dozens of bodies inside. At last count, there were 46 people dead and 16 in hospitals suffering from heat-related illnesses. According to Mayor Ron Nuremberg, the numbers are nothing like San Antonio has ever seen before. 46 individuals who are no longer with us, who had families, um, who were likely trying to find uh, a better life. We have 16 folks who are fighting for their lives in their hospital. Instead, they lost their lives in the back of that truck. Now, the sight of all those bodies came as a shock, even to first responders. And we understand some of them are taking part in debriefs just to cope with what they saw. Now, police told us that this group of people, again, included four children, but they were not among the dead, those four children in hospitals being treated. Now, this discovery has deeply affected this community. And for more on that, we go to our R.J. Marquez with a live report. Yeah, thank you very much, Katrina. You just mentioned right there about these investigators, these officials that were on the scene just trying to cope with this tragedy here, maybe just uh, trying to talk about this as they continue on with this investigation. Now, leaders in the religious community are calling on San Antonio and South Texas to unite in prayers and support, not only for the victims, but also for the survivors as well. That would be the San Antonio Archdiocese and Franciscan priests here uh, just asking for prayers again for the people that died 46 people here and the others that are recovering in the hospital this morning and they also are asking for support for our first responders you just heard from the mayor right there we had heard from public officials last night chief hood uh, police chief william mcmanus as uh, they were just kind of trying to come to grips with this tragedy as they were releasing some preliminary details about this case um, and of course the responders that were here on the scene to initially begin this investigation. These spiritual leaders are saying that anyone, anyone that be, whether it's uh, first responders, people in the community that need to reach out to go ahead and do so. First and foremost is prayer, uh, community support. I think we need our community, especially here in San Antonio after what happened in Uvalde and now this. Um, it's just heart-wrenching and we need each other. We need a support from all the community to help bear um, this situation. 
And we also heard from San Antonio Archbishop Gustavo Garcia Siller. He issued a statement and also tweeted uh, the following in part, saying that we pray for the souls of the 46 people who died in such a cruel, inhuman manner, and also keep in prayer the survivors as well as their families and the first responders who assisted and saved lives and must now carry with them the memories of this scene of carnage. Some very descriptive words there from the Archbishop. The tweet also referenced that these victims were just hoping for better lives. And also Antonio Fernandez, he's the CEO of Catholic Charities. We talked to him as well, and he said that they are working to help survivors as well. So as far as people in the community, if you need someone to talk to about how this is impacting you emotionally, all you need to do is call the Ecumenical Center. That number is 210-616-80885. Again, 210-616-0885, and you could get counseling there. We're going to now go to Tiffany Huertas, who continues our live coverage this morning at the hospital. Good morning, Tiffany. Good morning, RJ. Emergency crews transported 16 people to area hospitals, including here, Baptist Medical Center in downtown. San Antonio Fire Chief Charles Hood says they're all heat-related injuries. Hood says people were so weak inside the tractor trailer to even get out. Now, Hood says 46 people died at the scene. First responders helped 16 people out of the trailer, 12 adults and four minors. They were taken to local hospitals. Five people are at Baptist Medical Center in downtown and in critical condition. Two adults were taken to Texas Vista Medical Center, a 26-year-old woman and a 32-year-old man, both in critical but stable condition and University Hospital received two patients. Their conditions are unknown at this time. Chief Hood says 10 medic units were used to transport the survivors. He describes what they saw inside the tractor trailer. The patients that we saw were hot to the touch. They were suffering uh, from heat stroke, heat exhaustion, uh, no signs of water in the vehicle. It was a refrigerated tractor trailer but there was no uh, visible working AC unit on that rig. The Mexican Secretary of External Relations tweeted last night that at least two people inside the trailer were from Guatemala. An official with the Mexican consulate in San Antonio was at the scene last night and says they are following this developing story. Also, an Honduran official says they are also watching this and investigating whether any Hondurans were inside the tractor trailer. Mark, Stephanie? Tiffany, thank you very much for our team coverage there and to RJ and Katrina. Well, many leaders responding to this tragedy. San Antonio Mayor Ron Nierberg tweeting, migrants seeking asylum should always be treated as a humanitarian crisis. We're facing a horrific human tragedy. More than 40 hopeful lives were lost. I urge you to think compassionately, pray for the deceased, the ailing and their families at this moment. And Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorga is also responding to the incident. He tweeted, quote, I am heartbroken by the tragic loss of life today and I'm praying for those still fighting for their lives. Far too many lives have been lost as individuals, including families, women and children who take this dangerous journey. This is a story we'll be following closely throughout the day, both on air and online. Look for live reports in all our later newscasts and look for the latest developments on KSAT.com. And right now it is 76 degrees and we are expecting temperatures not to get to the triple digits today. A break from the extreme heat. Mike Ostrich joins us and then we'll be talking with Stephen Cavazos for an update on your Tuesday morning commute. Morning, Mike. Good morning. Yeah, yesterday we were talking about uh, that before the rain came, it was going to get hot. And yeah, unfortunately, it lived up to it. We hit 101 yesterday here in town officially. But when that gust front especially moved on through temperatures here, dropped down about uh, 10, 11 degrees in New Braunfels, went from the upper 90s to the upper 70s within just a matter of minutes as those storms, uh, which did produce some severe winds. The winds were uh, well over 60 miles per hour, and so severe thunderstorm warnings in New Braunfels yesterday. 77 right now, dew points at 64. So, yes, it's humid, but it's a lot more comfortable than where we've been in recent memory. And the wind is out of the north at 6 miles per hour, north primarily. So, that uh, cool front is still just draped to the south of the area with those northerly winds. We've had a few showers, as you can see, that earlier this morning. Those have all but uh, fizzle on out. Got a couple of more down there to the southwest. Those are going to continue to fizzle out. We've got a mention of a shower around here this morning just to take into account any leftovers. Then we'll get in that lull period and then rain chances will come back into the picture. Mid 70s on average, couple of upper 70s, 79 right now, Castroville, 78 at Stinson. Low amount of mold in the atmosphere and throughout the day, again, a leftover shower too this morning. Then we will see more scattered storms. 92 for a high temperature. 
boy, that's just rolls right off the tongue. It that sounds really, really nice. A few more storms around here. Shower storms tomorrow. Not a great chance of rain mid 90s and then the rest of the week. Couple of showers now heavier rain off to the east, although there are a couple of conflicting long range computer models. We're going to have to keep an eye on where a, a low comes in and the path it takes coming in out of the uh, Gulf of Mexico and yep. It is going to start to get hotter for the long 4th of July weekend. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, what's up? Hey, well, the sun's out and we are seeing some progress. 37 at Houston. We told you about that work that was being done there. Looks like it is cleared out, but now we have a different shot from 35 at Von Army. You're going to have to find out what's going on there. Look like we saw some heavy traffic, but for now, elsewhere, I-10 at Hackberry, the morning is moving and people are actually not having any trouble out there, but be on the lookout. 281 southbound, a stall there at Bassey Road. Not not causing any issues, but those south lanes of Bassey, boy, we do know that those fill up with vehicles, so you got to make sure that you watch out, especially now that morning rush is just about here. Wide look the map, just a lot of those active construction spots, so we're in the green right now. So, and if you have to head out the door in the next few moments, no need to rush, but always remember to keep your eyes on the road. We're going to have more updates coming up in the next few minutes. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. San Antonio police have arrested a suspect they say may have been planning to commit a mass shooting at a local Amazon warehouse. Now, that station is located at the 8200 block of sous vide way on the southeast side near Goliad Road. And according to a police affidavit, the suspect Rodolfo Acevedo told someone during a fire alarm last Friday that it would be a good idea to pull a fire alarm and have all employees exit the building and commit a mass shooting. In the affidavit, Acevedo also says that the shooter of the Uvalde school shooting was a quote idol. Now the affidavit also says the suspect's father told police that he had recently purchased an AR platform rifle and that his family was scared that Acevedo had a weapon because of past behavior and mental health illness. Acevedo is now charged with making a terroristic threat. He is in jail on a $50,000 bond. New this morning, six people and four pets managed to escape a house fire overnight on the northeast side. Happened just after midnight. In Live Oak, in the 13,000 block of Altium Marano, fire crews said the people inside heard popping and smelled smoke and were all able to get out okay. Officials say the fire was contained to the garage and the two vehicles were in the driveway. However, they still estimate there was $100,000 worth of damage. The people who lived there are now staying with family. Time now, 642 and 76 degrees for now. It's something no one wants to talk about in the office. Just ahead, talking about ageism at work. 646, more than 10 million people in the U.S. are looking for a job right now. And people over the age of 45 cite one thing as their top obstacle to getting hired at their age, especially if they work in the high tech or entertainment industries. And as R.J. Marquez reports, the workforce continues to age. This isn't a problem that's going away. There seems to be one ism people are not talking about. AARP reports two out of three workers between the ages of 45 and 74 say they have seen or experienced age discrimination at work. A lot of people my age have that problem. They'd rather have younger so that you're fresh. But what do older employees bring to the workplace? Experience, work ethic. Men and women over 50 are more than twice as likely as other workers to be unemployed for two years or longer if they lose their current job. That's why 44% of over 45s admit to altering their age on their resume. But hiring experts say to emphasize their tech skills to counter possible stereotypes. Be sure to have an updated LinkedIn account, cultivate an active social media presence, highlight additional education, condense your work experiences to the last 15 years on your resume. Most importantly, emphasize what you can bring to the company. I think experience is the best teacher. A lot of times you just can't get it in the classroom. One study showed a 50 year old worker was up to three times less likely to get an interview than a 28 year old applicant. Age discrimination is illegal at any stage of employment, including during hiring, promotions and raises and also layoffs. If you think that you've been discriminated against, you can file a charge with the Federal Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. All right, let's get a look here at 35 at Von Army. We told you about this shot earlier. This uh, not looking good for at least two drivers. You can I'll step out of the lens there so you can see exactly what we are detecting. Uh, trans guy picking up at least two vehicles off in the grass in that direction. Not sure it, which area that is actually in, but the trans guy camera showing us that's somewhere near the south uh, southwest side. So we'll have to watch that area closely. Thankfully, it's not causing any issues for traffic, but let's hope that they get the help that they need in the next few minutes. But taking you back here into town, 281 southbound. 
down. A stall still reported at Bassey Road, but other than that, that's pretty much it. We really haven't had a whole lot to talk about today. So now that we're in morning rush, thankfully, we're just seeing a lot of green on the screen, so no one is going to complain about that. But just remember to be safe. We're going to try to get some information here at 35 at Von Army, Mike. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, like the caption says, not everybody was happy about the rain. <laughs> Hence oh. the phrase, matter in a wet hen. I just love that picture. That guy just looks miserable there. So thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. I think he's the only one that wasn't happy about the rain. And then those of us that didn't see a whole bunch of it yesterday. But uh, we do have another chance for some decent uh, showers and a couple of thunderstorms later on today. Nice looking sunrise. We have had uh, a couple of showers around this morning, and it almost looks like one or two more are starting to pop up right here just around Gonzales. That is just happening in the past couple of uh, moments there, and that's pretty much about it. This is some ground clutter around the uh, radar site. We had a few of them out here to the west in uh, portions of the hill country, but it looks like most all of those have pretty much uh, fizzled on out. As you can see, those were kind of sweeping around, and then those couple down there to the uh, southwest, and that continues to die down, but it is encouraging to see that one little spot right there just around Gonzales. Now, as far as the rest of today, yeah, I still have the mention of a couple of showers around this morning just to take into account one or two of those leftover showers here and there or something popping up and then we'll see some sunshine later on this morning get up in through the mid 80s 86 at noon and then rain chances start to come back into the picture 92 for a high temperature today so we are going to be well that's the lowest high temperature we've seen in about a month and actually back in late may last time we were in the low 90s we had some rain on that day as well so 40 percent chance for a couple of showers and thunderstorms which is what this computer model does it's initializing very well with some of these showers that have been popping up around here then we get into that lull period throughout the uh, mid-morning hours and then more are going to start to fire back up as we go into the afternoon hours and you could have a couple of decent uh, downpours here a few uh, thunderstorms mixed in as well some blustery winds can't be ruled out kind of like was the situation up in Kamal County yesterday and those winds got strong enough to prompt severe thunderstorm warnings to be uh, issued and this will last in through the evening hours okay now here's the question as far as later on in the week there is a disturbance down here in the Gulf of Mexico this particular computer model which the earlier run had it off to the east. Now it wants to take the brunt of this rain and basically put it just to the west of San Antonio, and this would be through Friday, and obviously this would make for a very rainy situation for us. Another long-range computer model does just about the opposite, takes the heart of all that rain and puts it well off to the east of us, and this is going to be Thursday into Friday. So obviously this is one of those situations where we just have to monitor it quite closely and see exactly the path that that low wants to take, whether we get more rain throughout much of our area or most of it's off to the east. 86 at noon, partly cloudy skies, high temperature today, 92. Oh, it's going to be nice not having those thermometers just popping out and peaking up there in the triple digits. A couple of uh, scattered showers and thunderstorms around the area today, about a 40% chance for some rain. So again, hopefully you get a, a good dousing and then rain chances do tend to drop off. Temperatures stay in the low to mid 90s. We're going to watch Thursday and Friday quite closely and then looks like a really hot weekend for the first weekend of July, 4th of July weekend. Not bad for now. I think you brought back nicer weather. After your vacation, I worked on it. Yeah, right. Way to thank go, you. <laughs> thank you for that. 652, 76 degrees. And looking to get ahead at work tomorrow on GMSA, the best advice to help you reach the top. Outside with Live Cam, we'll wrap up GMSA coming up after this break. Take a look at this morning's sunrise. It's a beauty. Time now, 6.55. Let's get one last look at your morning commute. 35 at Von Ormy. We know that this is actually now a reported as a stall in the southbound lanes near the southwest side, so you got to make sure you're driving carefully. Check your vehicles before you get out on the road. Looks like a Texod Hero truck just arrived to the scene, Mike. Mid-70s right now. We are going to make it up to 86 at noon and more scattered showers and thunderstorms later on today. 92 for a high temperature, so if you didn't get in rain yesterday, hopefully you get some today. Rain chances tend to uh, go down. Just a few of those showers hanging around here this morning. Stephen, Mike, thank you guys. Yes, thank you guys for joining us today. Uh, we're going to have more on all this breaking news at 9. That's right. Good morning, America is next. Obviously, the tragedy here in San Antonio has made national headlines, and it will be one of their top stories. For now, have a good morning.